All right, welcome to Unit 7.3 in physics, probably a part one because I've got like five problems to work, so I'm going to split that up over a couple of videos. But this unit is going to be on centripetal acceleration, centripetal force. And let's go ahead and go to straight off the bat to a typical physics trick, multiple choice questions. You know how we love answering those questions, asking those kinds of questions in physics. Uh, let's get to an object that's going in a circle. If we were in class right now, I'd probably be swinging something around my head at this point, but that's kind of hard to do on this sheet of paper. So, uh, yeah, anyway. So let's just go straight and look at the circle. And let's say we've got an object, and let's say it's rotating in the circle, and it's not speeding up or slowing down. So in other words, it's rotating at a constant speed. So in other words, you got rotating at constant speed. Well, a question on the test would be like, is there an acceleration? It's an object rotating with a constant velocity. So let's just, let's just do this. Let's just take this ruler. Let's just kind of get this little uh, radius here. Let's draw this tangential because if this object were to break, it would travel at this instant. It would travel just like this. So here we've got this velocity, and we'll call this velocity number one, and it's traveling just like that. And let's say it's moving at a constant velocity. So a common question would be like, does this object have an acceleration? And most people say no, because you said the word constant velocity. It's moving at 10 meters per second, constant velocity. And they would say, no, it's not accelerating. Well, it's a trick question. Yes, it is accelerating. But wait a second. Well, let's let's do this. Let's kind of draw to here. And now let's do the same. Let's do another tangential line, which means 90 degrees. Let's do this. Normally, we should try and draw these closer together. But anyway, we've got two tangential velocities, V1 and V2 at this point. And now we can sit here and be like, all right, well, wait a minute. If it's 10 meters per second here, then it's 10 meters per second there. So the velocity hasn't changed. you got to go back and remember your definition of velocity. Velocity is not speed. Velocity is speed with a direction. It's a vector. So the trick question is the speed isn't changing if this rotates at constant velocity but the direction changes. So if you have a change in direction, you also have an acceleration. Well, the next big question is, well, where is that acceleration pointing? Well, you got to think, if you're swinging something in a circle, it doesn't want to go in a circle. Something is pulling it and keeping it in the circle. And we can kind of prove that by looking at this picture. If you take these two velocities, look at what happens to these two velocities. You got one looks like this. The other one, on the other hand, well, let's subtract it. Let's subtract this second velocity. If we subtract the other velocity, look at the direction of the difference. If you subtract these two from each other, here's your change of velocity. Bam. Which means the acceleration on this object is going where? The acceleration is towards the center of the circle. We call this acceleration the centripetal acceleration. We've even got an equation for it. Centripetal acceleration is equal to, and I want you to remember this one, v squared over r. It's a very easy equation to remember. So we've actually got a centripetal acceleration present in this problem. This is the first formula of this chapter. So if you were working a problem and it told you that something had a speed of 10 meters per second and a circle of radius 5, bam, we could find this center-seeking acceleration really easily because all we'd have to do is come back in up here and be like, what's well, 10 square over 5, so 100 over 5, so that's 20. This is a plain old type of acceleration, which means you'd have a unit of m over s squared. Now, every now and then, you will work a problem that's trying to be a real pain in your butt. And you will work a problem, and it, it you'll work a problem. I'm going to go back and grab me a glass again or something here. Late bell. And you will actually work a problem. Something's moving in a circle, 
and the problem will come back and then try and say, let's 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 do something here. I'm gonna get my little circle back. No 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 no. You'll work a problem and it says that an object is moving in a circle. Well anytime you've got an object moving in a circle, that's going to instantly tell you you have to have anytime something moves in a circle, you have to have a centripetal acceleration. That's a given. But every now and then you'll work a problem and it says this object also has a tangential acceleration, which tangential just means it's at a right angle. If you will, and this is a very rare problem that does this, you don't see it a lot, but every now and then you will see a problem that gives you two accelerations and then it'll be like, bam, now find the total acceleration. How do you find the acceleration of two things at right angles to each other? Look at it. It's Pythagorean theorem. If you ever work a problem that has two accelerations, a tangential and a centripetal, all you got to do is take your, here, we'll create a little equation. There. All you got to do is take the Pythagorean on those two equations. If you ever work a problem that tries to give you these two accelerations like this. Most of the problem in regular physics don't have that tangential acceleration. Usually they're rotating at a constant velocity. But you never know what you might run into. And I like to try and make sure you're prepared for any situation. Well, there's our basic equation to get started. Let's see if we can not do some type of a problem here with it. Looks like we've got a race car. A race car slows down uniformly from 59 meters per second to 28 meters per second. To avoid an accident while the car travels on a circular path, it's given us a radius. Find the following for the car when its speed is 40 meters. I'll tell you what, it's like this thing is just trying to give you all kinds of boogerdom here. Let's, let's put us a circle on this problem here. So there is a car moving in a, on a circular track, uh, a circular path. Hold on, I'll be there eventually. You just keep yourself entertained. Maybe you go grab you a coffee cup and draw your own circle at this point. So here's a car. It's traveling on this circular track. I'm going to try and give me a little radius here. And it says the radius of my track is 430 meters. Now, I don't know why I wrote the little M up in the air like that, but hey, who knows. Now, it says at this point, at some point, the car has a velocity. And I'm going to write a VO here because it's giving me two velocity. It's saying it's going 59 meters per second. And then it says this car, and I don't know where, I'm just going to randomly draw an arrow up here. It's somewhere else along this track. The car then slows down. It says that the car slows down to a speed of 28 meters per second. Look at all this stuff it's giving us. We've got a VO, we've got a V. It also says that this takes place in a time of 3.7 seconds. All right, so we've definitely got something going on here. Now, look at everything we've got. We've got TV. Huh, you know what I think we can find? Check this out. We've got all this stuff. Let's go back to our normal kinematics. V equals VO plus AT. Look at what we can find already in this problem. We can find acceleration. We know that this is 28. 59 plus A times 3.7. I haven't even read anything the problem asks yet, but I can go ahead and start figuring out a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, probably I'm getting overboard here, but hey, that's my business. So 28 uh minus 59 divided by 3.7 is 8.38 so we've got a negative 
0.38 meter per second square acceleration. Now notice something. This is a plain old acceleration, as in this is an this is important. This is just an A. So this is not an AC. This is just a plain old fashioned acceleration. Nothing new that we've done here. We might order to read and see what the problem wants. It says find the centripetal acceleration. Ooh. It says find the centripetal acceleration when the car is going 40 meters per second. So somewhere along this path, when the car is slowed down to 40, so it's just giving us a random point here. When the car is at 40, boy, I'm getting crooked and all kinds of stuff. All it says is find centripetal acceleration. Well, we have an equation to find centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is just V squared over R. Well, look at what it's done. It said find the acceleration at 40. Well, all we've got to do is plug numbers in. This would be 40 square over the radius is 430. And now we can come back in here. We've got this number. 40 square divided by 430, 3.72. So we've got an acceleration here of 3.72 meters per second square. So we found our centripetal acceleration. Well, that was easy enough. Now it says find the angular speed at this same point. So in other words, it's given you a V. And now it says, what is W for this point? How can we find W if we've got V? Well, we've got an equation that ties the two together. V is equal to RW. V is 40. R is 430. So what is our angular velocity? Well, let's find out. 40 divided by 430. 0 0.093. So we've got a 0 0.093 radian per second velocity. If we check our answer up here, it turns out so far we're two for two on this thing. So we're doing a great job here. What's funny is I found this acceleration over here, tangential, and we haven't even used that for anything yet. But hey, the night's still young. We might still get lucky. Oh, my goodness. Part C. Part C says find tangential acceleration. Well, take a look at what we've already done. So... Bam, there's my plain old-fashioned tangential acceleration. I found my angular velocity, W, over here. I also found centripetal acceleration. So I found three of the four things it asks. Part D says, find the total acceleration. Wait a second. I can do this. Total acceleration means find the acceleration... You've got a centripetal acceleration pointing towards the center of 3.72. You've got a tangential acceleration of 8.38. The negative doesn't matter. Look at what you've got. All you've got to do is find the Pythagorean on this. 8.38 square plus 3.72 square. And if you're going to do Pythagorean, Pythag man, I sound redneck now, don't I? Take the reciprocal, the reciprocal. Take the square root of that. 8.38 square plus 3.72 square, square root, 9.17. So there's the total acceleration. Now, I like how we did this example. It gave you a lot of stuff to do, but I'm going to throw something back at you one more time. The reality of it is it's very rare you have a problem. It's not that rare, but it, a lot of these problems won't. But anyway, it is a good example problem. It's got the centripetal acceleration you figured out, and it had you figure out this other acceleration too over here. So anyway, you should be in good shape now to start working some of these problems. So the next one we're going to do is going to be on forces with some triple force. Anyway, thank you for watching.